So just to be absolutely clear, this will... Yeah, this will wipe everything. It will format the hard drive to the format commonly used by Linux operating systems, and this will wipe everything out. So this is all completely free. Um, Ubuntu is not only open source, which means that the code is available for anyone to edit and use, but it's free. Um, so you can download this straight away. So, I mean, for there's a large portion of the Windows community at the moment who are reluctant to move forward to Windows 7 or Windows 8 now, especially, um, and want to stay with their familiar XP. Um, but support for XP is being cut off soon, um, and it quite, can be quite expensive to upgrade to an operating system you don't want in the first place. So the best alternative for many people is to try a Linux version. So there are some versions of Linux that do mimic XP very well, in fact. Um, and although you don't, might not necessarily have access to all the same programs, there's usually a Linux alternative, and it's completely free of charge. This has cost us nothing to do. Um, it will cost nothing to do for the life of the operating system. And the best thing about using a free and open source operating system is a lot of the software then also tends to be free and open source. This laptop seems to be significantly improved of it, so I think we'll go ahead and install it. We're still in our trial Ubuntu, um, but it conveniently leaves this gigantic install Ubuntu button here. You get it here and in the taskbar. They put it in two places right next to each other, just in case you're really not sure you want to install it. Okay, right, so we can then get the options. We are English, so we continue. So the install menu is really straightforward, nothing complicated. So this is preparing to install Ubuntu. It asks to make sure you've got, see, so it even checks you've got the correct requirements, nothing goes wrong. We're not correct to the internet, um, so it won't download any updates, but it will install what's on the disk. So you're going to kill Windows. We're completely wiping it and replacing it with Ubuntu, but this is taking a while. Just wait for that to go. How old would you have been when this computer came out in 2006? Okay, uh, well, I'm 21 now, so I would have been around 13, um, which is probably, ironically, the first time I was doing this process to a machine. Um, yes, yeah, so this is quite a quite an old piece of kit, almost a third of my age. I don't think I had a laptop till I was about 17, and even then it was this big metal Patriot thing, about this thickness, but it was made out of metal for some reason, um, and weighed half a ton, um, and died much sooner than this. this. This has got a relatively advanced Intel processor, that thing had a VIA processor. So this is a really quite advanced machine, and the fact the screen's still so bright and clear now is quite incredible. It's very high resolution for a laptop as well. This was obviously before the dark ages, where laptops got stuck in that horrible, what was it like, the really weird post box screens that we're stuck with now, for stuck with now still. What about kind of reliability? Because you know Windows um, uh, historically had people complaining about its reliability. Yeah. XP has been pretty good, which is why people are stuck yeah. with it. But what about? So um, oh, this may start some sort of flame war here, but I mean, historically, Linux systems are much more stable. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, you've got Linux systems running in data centers and being rebooted for decades. Um, and a lot of the infrastructure of the country runs on Linux systems. Um, and this being a long-term support version of Ubuntu will be very stable. Um, you're not going to have any patches come down that break everything suddenly. All the patches that come to this for the foreseeable future will be verified to be stable and so, so on and so forth. So you won't get any blue screen of death. That's not something that happens. Um, and quite often, the really cool thing about using the Linux system is if you install an update or you install a new program, you don't have to restart. Very rarely do you ever have to restart from installing something, which is kind of an everyday occurrence on a Windows. You can't install or uninstall any program without it asking you to restart. You never have to do that sort of thing in the Linux really well. Never is a strong word. You occasionally do, but from day-to-day -day use, you won't really come into that problem. There's got to be some drawbacks here. I mean, what about using files from LibreOffice on somewhere else then? What? Yeah, so um, LibreOffice, so because this is all free and all doing relatively well and so successful, there are some kind of passive aggressive attempts to put a stop to it. So especially with LibreOffice, you find that it has trouble rendering uh, the newer Microsoft Office formats. So if you're dealing with uh, formats from uh, Office 2013 or anything DocX. Sometimes the fancier formatting options don't come up perfectly um, and it does mangle documents sometimes. Um, but for the basics it works perfectly and if you save to an older format, it's capable of saving to a Word format so people with Word can open it and as long as you save to an older format it works really well. Um, I think the fact that Microsoft are continuing to try and close off their formats shows how threatened they are by Linux being free and uh, Ubuntu especially in the success of Ubuntu. So we've just got into the menu which lets us decide what we want to do with the previous operating system. Ubuntu has detected that this system has uh, another operating system on it. It's given us some options. The first option uh, basically will make some room on the disk from free space that's available uh, and it will put Ubuntu in there. So then when we start the machine we can choose between going to our previous operating system, in this case Windows XP, or to go into Ubuntu. So this is called dual booting and basically it means you have two operating systems that exist on the same machine. They both have their own files 
results. They both have their own programs, and you can choose which one to run when you start up. So this is really useful for people, uh, say who, say people who rely on a certain program on Windows, but they want to use Ubuntu. So um, if you rely on Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator or video editing software, um, this is a very good route to take. So you can boot into that when you need it, and you can use a Linux system for your other needs. Um, the second option, which is what we're going to do today, is erase the disk and install Ubuntu. So that wipes everything off, completely formats the disk. XP will be nowhere to be seen. Um, and Ubuntu will be the primary operating system. We won't have dual booting, we'll just have the one machine. And then something else, um, this, for majority of people won't have to worry about this, this puts you into the partition manager, which lets you do these things manually yourself. So let's do erase disk and install Ubuntu. It just goes through the clarify which hard drive we want. It just warns us here again um, what exactly is going to happen. So four partitions will be deleted. So this has four because this uh, machine has quite a nifty feature where there's actually another operating system start, uh, installed on it which is kind of a media operating system so you, you can bypass Windows entirely and boot straight into the media center um, and we're also going to nuke that so several operating systems are being destroyed in this process so install now so now it's going for the installing so um, there's a little progress bar at the bottom uh, which tells you exactly what's happening um, and in the meantime it's going to some options to go through so now I've been while it's installing it's uh, asking us select our time zone this map is really fiddly there we go london okay so we'll set it to london and continue so it's quite a good install process it doesn't ask you loads of questions and then go through and then you just sit there waiting for it to finish you actually do all of the options while it's installing so you're not wasting any time okay so i've just set up the user account going through there we go and now it's installing and while you're waiting for the install uh, installation it gives you some nice little tricks and tips and how to get more software and edit photos and how to set up your personal cloud and all this sort of stuff just keep you amused while it's installing which shouldn't take too long um, I mean this is an eight-year-old machine and this is ticking on very nicely and going pretty quick um, if you do it on anything new it would probably be lightning fast and if you do it on anything with an SSD it will more or less be instant okay okay so this kind of goes through some of the key features so it talks about the software center now we wait but one thing that differentiates this from starting up an XP system is once this is started up, once you get a desktop, you genuinely have the desktop. You may have noticed before with your Windows systems, when you get to the desktop and you think, oh, it's finally booted, you go try and do something and you sat there waiting for another three or four minutes. Uh, but this is genuinely up. We can open files. Let's just stress it out a bit and open load stuff on the taskbar. I made the mistake of opening LibreOffice first, which is now going to take a decade to load. We looked before at the Windows oh. XP Task Manager. Of course, should we have yep. a little comparison? I've opened System Monitor, just to have a little poke around, um, and LibreOffice is loading in the background. Um, so it's not a direct comparison. Last time we were extracting files here, I just opened a program, but that reached a peak of about just over 50%, um, and now it's gone back down. And we're sitting on idle now. I mean, this isn't like a scientific test, but already the load's much lower. And as we're sitting here on idle, the load is about between 5 and 8%. And Ubuntu is a bit of a confused operating system where it's trying to be consumer friendly, but at the same time, it's still very much a hard, uh, old school Linux system. So still, there's still a lot of actions that need to take place in the command line. Um, and a lot of those commands you need to do, you don't have to come up yourself, you can find them online uh, and copy and paste. It's really simple to do. Um, but where it's trying to be become this user friendly mass market system, it's starting to bring in nice uh, graphical wrappers to things. So the how you we typically install software is to use the command line. You uh, you have an apt get command, you put in the name of the software you want and it installs it and finds it. But they've written a packet, uh, like a, a app store front to this. Kind of, uh, You get a store front very similar to any normal app store front, so very similar to the iTunes store front, this sort of thing. Um, and software on there has reviews and you just click a download link and it's done, it's really easy. You don't have to mess around with the command line, um, you don't have to worry if it's downloading the right version or not, it would download the version for your system. Um, and it's all very, very, very simple and very easy. Not dissimilar to the pro, the ease of use of the process for Android and uh, iOS app stores. Um, but while that creature comfort is in place, you still have access to the command line for more advanced things. Um, and typically, if you start off, if you're new to Linux, you'll find that there probably is times when you need to copy and paste a command line command off the web. Um, but as you go about doing this, and as you do it more and more, and as you use it over the years, without realizing it, you'll start to learn the command line. Eventually, you'll become comfortable in it. And once you become comfortable in using the command line, it's a much more powerful way to work. Um, it's much quicker. You get a lot more power to manipulate exactly what's going on. You don't have to move the mouse around a lot. You can do everything from the keyboard. Um, and that's what makes it so popular with uh, developers and IT professionals, is that once you get your workflow set up, once you get your commands set up, once you get used to the commands, um, everything's so quick and so effortless.